Oh, and shout out to Pat Noonan, who told me, I don't know if he was just being nice, but told us that he told me that he is a fan of the show. <gasps> That's okay. huge. What the boss man is what listening. What is the show called? The no. Call Up. It's a very- okay. I'll, uh, I'll be more aware of it now and be watching. Now, see, this is good. See, Matt, see, you can listen to a few a few episodes, okay. listen to this one back, and then we'll we'll get your your thoughts. And okay. you can say, Sounds I'm a good. fan of the call up Sounds too. Good. Just like Pat. What is up, everybody? Welcome in to our ATT <laughs> 5B Virtual Studios. This is the call up. I am Julian Zachis. This is Susanna Collins. And we are I can't breathe. Oh. We are fresh off of our, I can't see what these are in the basement. We are fresh off of our um, MLS All-Star Extravaganza <laughs> Week hangovers. Oh my God. Um, Hence the sun, if you're watching. Oh yeah, good point. I have sunglasses on. Jill took them off. No, if you're listening. These are, if you're listening. Oh my God. This is what I mean. If you're watching. If you're listening, yeah. people. Yeah, if you're watching, you can clearly see I'm wearing sunglasses. Also, but- we're on brand. Uh, oh, we're MLS on brand. Suzez Adidas, yep, sure which is a league sponsor, and I have Oneonta State, um, the best, the best of the public universities in New York. Tell State. them who went there. Myself and Commissioner Don Garber. There you so, go. On brand. Thank you very much. Uh, here in Major League <laughs> Soccer, but you know what? Let's talk about what we actually talk about on this episode. Yeah. Um, and not the fact that we have hangovers. You got first. Because, of all, I you were at a wedding, so you well, should have. A I went straight from MLS All Star, which was if you guys followed along, if you watched last week, like it. We, we didn't we do had anything. The, we had the best time, but it was it's jam packed and it's exhausting. And then so I had to go straight from MLS All Star to a wedding. So it oh, was just, Crimea I know, River. Crimea River. I didn't go to just, I've, been, I've been going hard. I've been going hard for a few a few consecutive. Mama days. had to work. Mama had to work. <laughs> So I, I shouldn't have a hangover. Oh, I was working. I was on the, you were, I was working that dance floor. <laughs> yes. I was on live television covering Atlanta United in Cincinnati. <laughs> and I have more, I have a mental hangover. Just no, putting that out you, there because I was at work. You are definitely, yes. Hungover. You've been, you've been, you've been using your brain way more than I have the last few days. We both use our brains in different ways. <laughs> okay. So on this episode, um, we have Matt Miazga, household name amongst U.S. circles, yeah. MLS circles. Back in the day, as he said to us, I don't know if you'd remember. And thank you to Matt Miazga also in that open for serving us some humble pie. He sure did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this show called? Again, good question. Uh, so, oh. but he has had quite the 10 days um, signed by FC Cincinnati on a three and a half year deal on August 5th. Mm-hmm. Then fresh off of his first start for FC Cincinnati this past weekend um, in the two, two draw against Atlanta United. So welcome back to major league soccer, Matt Miazga. Um, and I think that towards the end, we get into the national team mm-hmm. and that he's been talking to head coach, Greg Berhalter, yeah. 22 caps for the U S and it sounds like at some point for Matt, there's more to come because in covering the U.S. this year and talking to Greg, the one thing he says a lot is it's not so much about where you are. Mm-hmm. It's about are you playing? Yes. And Matt and Miazga he's get minutes. Yeah. comes to Cincinnati and basically drops his bag and is in the starting level. And this is huge because um, we've talked about this a lot, but like Cincinnati has become such a fun team to watch. Their attack is one of the most exciting electric in the leagues right now. If there was it's one good. thing to say about them, it was that their the defense, the back line – you know, a little bit suspect and they, they would ship a lot of goals. So Matt Miazga, when this signing was made, I was like, this is brilliant because this is a very, very experienced center back um, who has big game experience. And MLS played in the experience. Premier League. Exactly. He, he has it, he brings it all and he's still only 27 years old. And so if, you know, a guy like that who used to be, he was kind of a mainstay with the U S men's national team. Yeah. If he's getting those minutes and if he is able to kind of like shore things up, in Cincinnati and that back line, like there's no reason why he can't well, kind of reinsert himself into that's that a equation. Question. And you need experience in a, on a World Cup roster. You need experience. Well, with the U.S. and like, okay, let's talk about goalkeepers. You know, you hear a lot about Zach Steff and Matt mm-hmm. Turner. It's like, well, are they getting the minutes? Are yeah. they getting the time? And then all of a sudden, Sean Johnson's name is mentioned. So exactly. we'll see how that all sorts out. Obviously, it's a different conversation with center backs with, you know, talking about Aaron Long, Walker Zimmerman, who get lots of minutes all yeah. the time and have done very well. So anyway... Um, that was our, that's again, our thoughts on the U.S. Men's National Team, which we share often. And we shared with Greg Berhalter, uh, last Monday and he seemed unsolicited unsolicited and in person, he seemed terrified. Um, and if you want to watch that, by the way, go back and watch our two and a half hour extravaganza. I know that sounds nauseating, but it was actually fantastic. It was so much fun. What made it long was how many MLSers 
wanted to come pop in unsolicited when it wasn't their turn, including Greg Berhalter. And it was a really fun flowing, um, almost like rapid fire, 10 to 15 minutes with basically everybody. And we really didn't talk about All-Star. So if you want to kind of learn a little bit about the biggest personalities of the best players in the league, uh, go back and watch that. But as for today, uh, take a listen to our chat with Matt Miazga. Time now for AT&T 5G called to the field. And we are so excited to bring in the newest signing for FC Cincinnati center back, Matt Miazga. So great to see you, Matt. Thanks for coming on the pod. Thanks for having me. Well, we're really excited to have you. Um, not only because you're back in MLS, but also because of the fact that FC Cincinnati has become relatively fun to watch this year. I've been enjoying the success that Pat Noonan and the rest of the crew has brought them. So we're excited to see now where it goes um, with Matt Miazga. So we have to find out after seven years away, you were a mainstay name in the league. How much were you monitoring MLS from afar? Um, When I first left, the first few years after I left, I was definitely monitoring it. Had a lot of friends, obviously, through the league and and New York Red Bulls. And then, you know, as time kind of kind of passed, you know, slowly and and, and surely, I just started drifting a bit away from it. But I always, you know, made sure I, I followed the, obviously the New York Red Bulls because it's my hometown club and I have a lot of friends and family there um, and uh, friends that play within the league. So I've always monitored it. And whenever I was with the national team, I was able to, you know, speak with the guys that were there in the league and and getting a uh, up to date of, of how it's been uh, progressing and growing and 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 just being um, the league that it is and 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 becoming so much better and more known on the world stage. So I mean, it's been it was 2016 when you left MLS, and now we're here in 2022, and it's I mean the league has grown leaps and bounds. I started working for the league in 2016, and it was like I think like you had literally just left, and now there's like all these new teams and stadiums. Um, so it's a, it's clearly a growing league, but when, when you got the call from, from Cincinnati, when you, when you first kind of maybe started thinking about this seriously as your, as your next destination, can you kind of talk about, you know, what, what your impressions were and what those conversations look like? And then kind of what ultimately made you say like, this is going to be the right move for me. Yeah. Well, one thing is um, it's, I can't lie here that every U.S. national team player or American that is playing in in Europe always thinks about coming home. If, if one says they're not, they're lying. So <laughs> that's, all, that, that's always in the background of your mind. Obviously, mm-hmm. you want to, you know, um, try, you know, try your luck and your potential out in Europe. And there's obviously great opportunities to play in Europe. And and it's definitely an experience and something that I I I, I um, can support. And, and tell players to go because it's it's part of obviously uh, you know um, trying to reach your your full potential and, and, and the best of yourself in Europe and challenging yourself at the highest level. Um, but there's always you know that voice in the back of your mind saying, oh like it'd be nice to come back to MLS or it'd be nice to come back home stateside and play you know in front of fa- family and friends and and the country that you're born in. So uh, that's number one. Number two is um, when Cincinnati first came around. Um, I, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I said it before that my mind wasn't coming back on coming back to, to MLS, mm-hmm. but as time came by during the holiday break in, in the summer, I was able to come back uh, to Jersey. I was in America and that's when I got a, a couple calls from, you know, uh, Chris Albright uh, and, and, the, and the manager, Pat Noonan. And I was able to come out and see uh, the club here, the facilities they have, the stadium, and they're able to, you know, we're able to talk face to face and then, you know, present the project that they're building here. And it's something that was attractive to me. So as preseason went on, you know, we've, we've kept in touch and, and they were, they were really, you know, trying to lay out the red carpet for me to come here. And, and I felt very wanted here and, and I was able to, uh, to, to be pretty smooth in terms of negotiations uh, towards the end of the window. And, and here I am. So. How much, okay, because it's a tough sell, and it's no disrespect, it's it's the truth. I can't think of an expansion team in, so- in not soccer, in sports history that had a tougher, more challenging start than Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. 30, you have 34 games. They had four, six, and four, respectively, in their first three seasons. So how much of the success that they did have in the lead-up to the summer transfer window affect your decision-making? Yeah, you can see the changes they made internally. 
um, yeah. uh, obviously hiring a lot of experienced uh, uh, MLS uh, staff that that's worked in uh, in the league before, which I think is very important when, when you're when you're working in the MLS to, to mm-hmm. understand the the league rules, uh, how the league works, the players, so on and so forth. So um, I obviously knew Pat Newton from the national team as he was an assistant under Bruce, so I, I was able to have a relationship with him in the past. And um, you obviously see the money that they're pouring into the, to the to the club. It's a brand new stadium. I'd probably argue that it's you know what top three in the league. It's great, of, you know, football specific, soccer specific. I should say now, uh, since I'm back in America, uh, even though that's weird to say. Um, <laughs> you but, can still uh, be a little your own man. Yeah, okay. I think, specific. I think, I think you get a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. football specific. Um, they get an amazing support. Um, it's almost full uh, every game, especially my last game was, was a sellout. My first, my first, my first game last week was a sellout. Um, the training ground is brand new, very nice as well. Um, and you feel the support within, you know, the ownership. They're putting a lot of money into the club. You see the talent that we have, mm-hmm. and, we're, and you know, we're doing much better than than years past. So, um, I, I feel that it's a nice place for me to come in, settle, grow, and I feel a lot of confidence from the staff and the club. So I feel I feel good here. I have to add to what Matt just said because I think one thing about Cincinnati that was very unique is even though they struggled in their first three years as an expansion team. The support from oh, the fan base yeah. was always there. And I can't think of many other markets where that would be the case. The stadium is there. The facilities are there. Like everything else was in place. And then for the wins to kind of start to yeah. come after. The product on not, the field finally caught up to what is not the, the usual entire... progression, but big yes. credit to Cincinnati because I was covering the Atlanta United FC Cincinnati game. And it was so loud. TQ was awesome. Um, sellout crowd. I love it was Cincinnati. great. It was good. Great, great town. Um, also, it, one of the one of the things that has made this club so exciting this year in 2022 is that is that attack because we've got guys like Brandon Vasquez and Lucho Acosta and and Brenner, friends of the show, just friends of the show. Exactly, <laughs> they are talk to mid all star. Um, but it, they've just been so much fun to watch. And so I'm curious from from a center back's perspective, what were your first impressions um, when you saw these guys in action? Yeah, you can see the quality in training already. Um, very creative, intelligent players uh, like to get on the ball and, and create. And and when you're a defender playing with players like that, um, it's kind of nice to see from the back. You know, people <laughs> people taking taking initiative and control and trying to get goals. And, and obviously, good players being creative and and creating chances. Um, and then obviously in training, it's difficult you know to play against these players. But in the game, you saw that as well. You know. Uh, my job is obviously to try, you know, to to defend and then keep a clean sheet, secure, build, start the attacks, and their job is to, you know, uh, create and finish the attacks. Um, so it's nice to to have a lot of uh, players like that within the club that are able to uh, to perform at a high level, and you can see that that we're creating a lot of goals. I don't know, I've I've heard, I'm not sure the exact stat, but I think we're like top five in, in chances created in the league, which is obviously a huge plus. Um, and the more chance we create, the more opportunities the ball can go in the net. So that's the most important thing. So hopefully we continue to work hard in training. And Since he has become, we were talking about, they're like the must-watch team every week. It's like, because okay. you, you're like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do this week? Like, I almost wild. said as much to Pat Noonan after the game where I was like, you've, you, there's not, you don't know what you're going to get when you're, you know, maybe covering Atlanta United all year and you have a game against Cincinnati. It used to be like, and now you're I don't know what we're going to get. I would say coming into this weekend, into that match, that Cincinnati was the favorites. And until this year, you couldn't, you couldn't really say that. Yeah. So it's been fun. Let's play a quick game with Matt Miazga. Matt, now that you are back in the United States of America, um, back in Major League Soccer, we want to see what you are looking forward to, <laughs> okay. uh, soccer-wise, soccer-wise. Okay. Um, Football. Football. There you go. Football. <laughs> um, so rapid fire. Uh, we're going to find out what you're looking forward to. What away stadium are you looking forward to playing at the most? Uh, New York Red Bulls now because that's home and I play next week. So I'm excited to see family and friends and, <laughs> and go back home. Oh, that's going to be so fun. Um, what um, away city are you looking forward to outside of New I'll York? Like maybe one that you haven't played at yeah. yet. Um, I hear really good things about LAFC Stadium and their atmosphere. Uh, I haven't been to I haven't been to California in a long time, so that'd be a cool one to go to. It's cool. Who's the guy you want to go up against? Ooh, let's say Higuain, just because he's a he's a big name and and he's obviously a top player. He's my hero. I love him. <laughs> he's just we love on the him. show. We love him. We yeah. absolutely love him. Um, what is the team that you want to beat the most? 
Next game, New York Red Bulls. <laughs> um, who's the guy you're excited, maybe a little, I don't know if starstruck is the right word, but a guy you're kind of excited to see uh, on the other team or, or on the other bench? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say starstruck, but I'm just going to say, like, it's, it's nice to play against friends uh, mm-hmm. that I know and teammates. So, like, you know, my, you know, national team friends that, you know, I've played with, you know, for the past few years, it'll be nice mm-hmm. to play against them. So that's a different type of answer. But, yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. For you on, on FC Cincinnati, would that be Jeff Cameron? I know Jeff. I, I, I've, I, he was, I was really young when I was there. Okay. Uh, when, I was in a year again. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was at a few camps with him. So I know him pretty well, yeah. That's cool. And now I know, look at them, teammates and center backs. Um, okay, so like, let's think about your next game, Red Bulls. Who are you swapping jerseys with? Is there anyone Ooh. even left? Yeah. <laughs> At the, to be fair, Ryan Mierra's left. That's so, yeah, like I've been with him when I was like 2013. Okay, we were trying to figure that out. We were like, is anyone, yeah, with there. Aaron Long? Did you? Ever... I know Aaron well as well, so I okay, can. Okay. I know him. They're well. kind of played... the only OGs left. I know yeah. that from when we were covering. They're not even like. Yes. Like I only know Aaron because of the national team. I didn't play with him at Red Bull. Uh huh. Like, my Red Bull, my Red Bull OGs were like I don't know if you guys even know. Like when it was Thierry, Cahill, Olave. I heard Thierry on Dax, Dax, Sasha, Dax, Sasha. Oh, BWP, Bradley, B-dubs. Gosh. Laid. Like that was like the OG, Lloyd Sam. Those were the OGs. <sighs> Oh, was OG, yeah. oh, we no. good times. Those, good times. Those are the best. Um, They're the best guys. So let's go backwards a little bit. Uh, you were signed, and correct us if we're wrong. You were signed by Chelsea at the age of twenty. Yeah. Uh, twenty fifteen. That was such a big deal when you heard that Matt Miazga, Chelsea, Europe, yada yada. But you know, when I thought about who the manager was at that time, <laughs> Jose Mourinho. Did he call you? Like, did how much FaceTime did you get with him? Like, what was that? like and was there a moment that kind of stood out to you that maybe uh surprised you with him i met with him in person um after that 15 season in london wow and that kind of you know put things together what was that meeting like like was there um, coffee tea uh, here um i was a bit nervous obviously i was mm-hmm. a young i was a young kid essentially still and i'm going you know to you know i'm meeting you know one of the most you know <laughs> winningest winningest managers in, in in football history so it was kind of just like a starstruck moment if, if i should say um and then obviously it showed that you know he wanted me he knew who i was mm-hmm. and things kind of came to fruition after that that's amazing that's really what, crazy i would I'm be so i would be so intimidated but i've heard that he's actually like a really like nice guy yeah, yeah like yeah, it's yeah. you know he's very yeah. kind of like stoic on the outside but he's actually good too um, you've played in so many different countries. You played in England, Holland, France, Belgium, Spain. Of those experience, was there one was there one place where you kind of felt the most at home? Um, obviously the United States being your home, but was there was there a place where you thought like this this feels right? So I've enjoyed all of them. They've all mm-hmm. had their amazing experiences and and moments. Um I would say the most at home out of those I would feel was when I was in Holland at Vitesse because I was there for two seasons. Mm-hmm. And that was like my longest tenure of a, at a club in Europe. But the most I've enjoyed was actually probably Spain last year. It was a very like enjoyable lifestyle. And I was able you know, to le- learn the language and, 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 and kind of indulge and immerse myself in the, in the culture. So I enjoyed that a lot. How, how is your Spanish? Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, that's great to bring Depends- it back to MLS. Yeah. You've seen yeah. we need it now. Yeah, that's true. And it's I'm in America important. as well. It's it's uh, what well, the second most used language here. So uh, it's always nice to learn a new language. And and it's uh, you know even in the locker room, I'm trying to continue speaking Spanish so I yeah. can, so I don't lose it. You know what I mean? So, yes. Yeah. Well, um, don't let Lucho don't let Lucho fool you. His English is is very good. Is, yes, but he's... that would be good Spanglish immersion. That would be. That I would, joke yeah. A few times, like. Um, when we're speaking, I'm mixing in a couple English words with him so I can kind of like, so I, you know what I mean? So he can, yeah, I know he understands that's the thing, you know? Definitely, so. yes. I mean, we spoke to him in English for 10 minutes. I know, but he was very, he, he kept apologizing. He was like, my English is not good. We were like, no, you're. No, it's good, it's good. You, you're doing just <laughs> Also, you're speaking to us. So I know, like, exactly. He's the best. Um, when you look at the countries you've been able uh, to play and the experiences you've been able to get, was there one manager or one team that you feel like elevated maybe your soccer mind or your soccer game the most? Uh, Vincent Company at Anderlecht. Mm. What a, what a oh person my to learn. God. 
for a defender? What a person to learn under. What Phenomenal. was that like? Phenomenal manager. Phenomenal coach. Um, I learned so much with him, not just in the defensive aspect, just because he's a center defender, but just like mm-hmm. in football terms and understanding spacing, understanding, you know, um, pressure and building and, mm-hmm. and building out the back and things of that nature. So uh, he was very good and I enjoyed learning under him. That's nice. That's such a legend. Um, so I, I kind of want to like, kind of like take a step back, like big picture kind of stuff. So we talked about how much MLS has changed in the time since you left. Um, but you've had all of these experiences now, Matt, and you say you were 20 years old when you, when you signed with Chelsea. Um, and here you are kind of like this, like full circle moment, you're back in an MLS. How do you think that you have grown and evolved as a player during that time? Yeah, I think first and foremost, as a, as a person, I've evolved uh, tremendously, obviously learning so many, uh, uh, new different football philosophies, being in different cultures, you know, adjusting to different, you know, methods and people and, you know, adju- adjusting to, to fit in. Um, so that's, that, that, that was obviously a huge plus. But um, just growing up as a leader, being more mature, you know, when I left MLS, I was still a kid, essentially very young, raw. Now I feel like I'm more mature, experienced and, uh, and more of a leader. So while you're m- more mature, you're also not that old at 27. Um, at 27, uh, no, uh, but in MLS world, you are. Old, you're still old, young. Yes, uh, just 27 years old. 22 caps for the U.S. Men's National Team. You know, you played you 14s, 15s, 18s, 20s, 23s. Oh, you've been through the system. Fun fact: um, repped Poland at U18, right? True. Um, but I want to talk about the the U.S. because I think people hear the name mm-hmm. Matt Miazga and it's they think the yeah. U.S. Men's National Team. So. While, you know, I think everyone's talking about the attack right now. How much do you still think about being a part of the men's national team and your return here with that? Yeah, that's obviously always a goal is to be a part of the the national team at uh, at every moment possible. Um, Unfortunately, for whatever reasons, the last, uh, you know, whatever it was, 12 months or 10 months, I I wasn't a part of any camps. Uh, But I've been I've been in touch with Greg Mm -hmm. uh, numerous times throughout the year. So we've had our, you know, own personal confidential talks that I won't disclose. <laughs> That's but, okay. We just like to know you're talking to Triple G. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, that's always in the back of my mind. And, and obviously I see that um, also a lot of players in MLS are, are getting called up to the U.S. Uh, men's national team. So it would be nice to um, showcase my abilities here. And maybe that will put, put me in a better position to get called up. I love that. And I listen, if we put it out into the universe, Matt Miazga, you just don't know. You know, you we can know manifest what? this. We football manifest football's this. a football's a, a strange business. And it a, is. But and I, a, in a strange world. Um, but with not saying too much, uh, things always change and always happen. So you never know what can happen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because you said something that struck with me. It was like, you know, a lot of the guys now that are playing in MLS are getting called up and they're getting called into camps and they're getting looks um, from from national teams. Do you think that the perception of MLS, having spent some time in Europe now, do you think that it's starting to change, that it's starting to be kind of taken more seriously in the, the global soccer football spectrum? I think it is, but I still think it has a long way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think it is because there's always players asking me wherever I am about MLS and wanting to come back. Uh, That's through every team I've been at and every league. Um, And a lot of them also say that, you know, they they think that, oh, maybe I can come in later into my career and and get, you know, my last paycheck and and, and have a good time. And then they're finally realizing that it's not the case anymore and they can't get any offers and they can't get the money they want um, because MLS is looking different ways. MLS is looking for younger players, different leagues, um, different types of philosophies within the clubs. So, um in that aspect, it's obviously changing, and people are realizing, "Damn, I can't, I can't get in because I, sh- I should have got in earlier." You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, the, the, the mindset of MLS has changed, but at the same time, you know, I think it still has a long ways to go. But compared to all these leagues in Europe and around the world, it's so young, mm-hmm. so it's so hard to, you know, it's, you have to realize that's going to take time. And I think now with the 26 World Cup coming up, I feel like there will be a lot of growth in the next few years. Well, we'll leave, what a note. We'll leave it at that. Matt Miazga, thank exciting. you so very much for coming on um, for us. And thank you to FC Cincinnati staff for organizing uh, this in the late night hours uh, for us. <laughs>
A uh, big thanks there to Matt Miaska, but I also just want to give a huge shout out to the staff at FC Cincinnati that helped us sort this interview. Alex Steck. Alex Steck. Um, we love nursing you. COVID. She's yes. She's my sideline sister, Ugh. as as we have many in this league, and I didn't get to see her at Cincinnati, and she still sorted this interview um, for us. She works so hard, and she's so good at her job. We love you. Alex. Alongside of John Horlander, so thank you guys um, so much. Uh, here for that and here for a couple other things that we saw this weekend, aren't we? Big time. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, like, you know, the MLS All-Star come down, but like the party continued. Yeah. I okay? needed like water. The party continued because there were so many celebrity sightings at MLS matches or soccer matches this weekend because we could, well, we'll start with Snoop. Mm-hmm. at LAFC because that was like I mean to everything me, I was everything. like what did you tweet out you were like can we make Snoop the halftime show at MLS Cup this year and I was like that's brilliant yes please yeah let's let's make well, that happen for those that are watching we'll throw that up for you but yeah Snoop and it was funny all the things he's been he was Galaxy so games, into it so he, he was loving LAFC he really was he looked great in the gear he was just I mean so that was that was incredible and but, then at Angel City yes um, I saw a little, like, a zoom in. She wasn't, like, openly there, but mm-hmm. that means you're really famous and really rich. Tyra Banks just roaming the sidelines Casual. as well at Angel City. Casual. Angel City has Angel brought City out is some crushing it. really famous. Like, they are a packing bank of California Stadium I every game. I to go to an Angel City. I know. We need to try to make that happen. I think. Where do you think we'd be seated, per se? Because if, well, if, like, Tyra Banks is there. I mean... I feel like I feel like we could kind of maybe not like where Tyra is because they have those like really nice suites that mm-hmm. are like right on the field. I don't think we're there. I yeah. don't. I, I as much as you know, I'd mm-hmm. like to think that we're there. No, but maybe like the level above. Okay, I'm looking at just the. That's kind of where um, I'm at. Yeah, and I that. mean when you've got co-owners like Becky G and Jennifer Garner, Natalie Portman, they Eva might Longoria, line in the first row. Mia Hamm. You yeah. know what helps break that lot. credentials. Oh. That I am quite certain we could secure. <laughs> Jill. Um, there we right. go. There we go. That does it for this week. Oh, um, so much fun. Yeah, I'm gonna put my sunglasses back on because it's like I said, it's been it's just been a little it's been aggressive. But I have to go to Atlanta for their uh, game tomorrow against Red Bull. No stop. Jill, didn't even think about that. Can't stop. Won't stop. And, Guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna go like this the whole way. I think you should. Um, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll see you next week. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sakovitz, co-hosts of The Call Up. And if you want more Call Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos? as well.